Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Play Let It Die. So in the previous episode we had uh, discovered the Wandering Store uh, Hyakapuncha on floor 3 in the uh, Tectonic Terror Store Day, guaranteed uh, to find a stop. And there is a video available on uh, the Wandering Store, they say. So let's have a look. Let's, have a, let's check out the Majin tips first. Okay, I've got eight frames to talk. I just landed my ultra combo. Here's your tip. Boxes ask to be broken. If you see any large wooden boxes in the tower, smash them, man. Kill coins and beasts come out from inside them. You can even get coins from bricks. Uh, just be on your guard. Sometimes enemies are lying in wait behind, which can kind of suck. Okay. Okay, we've got a couple of new uh, movies. Let's check out uh, Cohen first. This tower was once used as a research facility by Professor Torada, the world's leading scientist behind super soldier research. As a result of many experiments, he created many new biological life forms, but most notable are the three shocks terror. Professor Torada believed that he could create stronger soldiers by simply combining humans together, resulting in these three monstrosities. One of these three is called Cohen. Cohen is nine feet two inches tall and weighs 1,960 pounds. He was created by combining multiple people into one. He was an unfinished experiment and suffers from poor vision. However, this has led to him developing a supreme sense of hearing. Cohen lets out a yell and uses the vibrations of the sound waves produced to determine where things are around him. Also, he pulls out the dead bodies of those he has vanquished in the tower and swings them or throws them as weapons. Cohen is extremely powerful and capable in combat. Okay, pretty nasty. Yakufuncha. Many people work within the Tower of Barbs. Commando Kawasaki, who runs the department store Gyaku Funsha, is one of those people. He is a 51-year-old American with a wife and children. However, two years ago, his wife left him, and he is now a single father. As a former black market weapons trader, he decided to open up his department store in the Tower. His store handles only the finest goods. He has a keen eye for quality, and if he likes you, he may just provide you with valuable advice. So he is well liked and trusted by his customers. His store is quite popular among tower climbers, as it gives them an advantage in equipment over others, which can make all the difference. Okay. <clears throat> Come on. I've been waiting. Put a motor in it, man. Yep. Yeah, I will put a motor in it. Let's go to TDM. Now, the biggest and uh, most important difference, I'd say, between the two shops, the one available at the waiting room and the one up in the tower, is the shop in the tower doesn't sell weapons or equipment that you can use. They sell resources and blueprints for uh, gear that you can learn at the waiting room uh, store. Ooh, 5,000 kill coins. 
Oh, it's just uh, asking to be raided there. <coughs> So, what I'm going to do today, what I'm going to be focusing on, is farming up kill coins needed. Uh, I said I was going to go to the uh, Wandering Yakufuncha one more time to pick up the blueprint, or uh, a blueprint, for uh, heavy hitter armor. Now I thought I'd make an episode of uh, farming kill coins. So I'll be using Tokyo Death Metro to farm. Okay. So we get five Spilithium for defeating a uh, level one hater. Okay, try to hang on. Stop kicking my ass. Hit me. Go on, hit me. Come at me. Go on. There we go. So the alternate attack of the bat can be used as a perfect card. It's got a second of setup though, so you can't use it reflexively in the middle of an enemy combo to defend. Which is a shame, because that means we'll probably never be using it. And that's maybe against bosses. If it works against bosses. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we won't ever be using it. Well, this guy's decently upgraded. That's the uh, kill tank. I mean, uh, the kill bank at level 7 upgrade. Is the. Uh, um, yeah, hold on. What is that? That's the buffalo. Yeah, that's definitely it's called the buffalo bank. And this is the Spliffium tank. They're confusing me with all the different names they're giving it. Oh, one of our weapons are gone and broke. There we go. We may have to buy a new weapon. Success. So I've got 10,000 kill coins. And the, you can find blueprints. <coughs> That's something I forgot to mention. The, uh, there's a lot of good things that the uh, Hyakofuncha store has to sell. The most important goods I'd say would be the uh, fact that it sells uh, boss drop uh, metals and new blueprints so they'll sell a limited supply of blueprints and the ones they'll sell are blueprints you don't know yet so if you're missing some blueprints that would be a good place to uh, to go and find them buy a metal bat A so we've upgraded the metal bat to its next form, which is much stronger. And upgrading weapons to its next grade. So you go from one star to two star, and they change the name and appearance of the weapon. One of the appeals of that is that you've got two that you can buy together. So as we upgrade the metal bat to its higher grades, we'll be able to buy uh, multiple versions of it. Now, of course, that has the downside that one weapon will be at a higher strength and another one will be weaker. But hey, at the moment, it's uh, pretty, pretty nifty. Okay, let's do another attack. We're also gaining Spliffium that we can use to upgrade our base, our waiting room. So check the waiting room menu. Our fighter freezer still needs a while to upgrade. And the uh, buffalo bank, Spliffium tank, 
also just about, well, we're going to need 6,400 minimum to start upgrading any of these. I think I'd upgrade the bank next to get its uh, capacity to 200,000. Let's see who can raid for a good amount of kill coins. 2,600 I've seen. 3,500. 3,500. 3,000. I'll raid someone for 3,500. This is a new weapon we've got. It kinda looks the same. Kinda. Does a bit more damage though. Now besides gaining an increase in damage when upgrading weapons, the other benefit is the level of weapon breakage from use will decrease. So a plus one weapon will break much quicker than a plus four weapon. Once we're past the loading screen, I'll go ahead and show that off. Okay, we made it. So the metal bats plus four, uh, you can see its stats. If you press R3, you can toggle between other information about the weapon. Now, pressing R3 once, it'll take us to the next menu where you see Durability loss A, guard against S, stamina A, rage move cost 1. I believe guard against and stamina are A for all weapons. Uh, I think. I don't think there's any that those ever change. But uh, the durability loss does change. So durability loss for the metal bat plus 4 is A. Durability loss for the bus or knuckles is B. So for weapons, they tend to start at B durability loss and they'll move to uh, A ranking in durability loss once they reach plus three. So upgrading weapons, increase strength, and at grade plus three, they will uh, break less fast. Uh, rating. I've got almost 10,000 kill coins, so we're going to have to do this a couple more times. Now the resources I gain from doing this. The Spliffium I will spend to upgrade the Fighter Freezer, the Buffalo Bank, or the Spliffium Tank. You get a lot of uh, spliffium from raiding Tokyo Death Metro, and uh, especially at the early game, you don't use that much resources to upgrade your weapons and armor. So you might as well use the 
huge amounts of uh, splipium you recover to upgrade your base. Come on, man, you're just postponing the inevitable. to a corner. There we go. Got some uh, mastery from him. One hundred and forty eight damage. Two hundred seventy four damage. Yep, the delayed third combo attack is definitely worth you uh, doing. Another bunch of kill coins. I'm not sure how often I'm going to be doing uh, Toka Death Metro uh, on video. Might want to do that. Uh, off screen from now on. This might be the uh, the last one, unless there's going to be like new ranks or new new attacks or defenses I want to show off. Sorry to keep you So you'll notice as we're raiding, we're also increasing in rank. Now our Tokyo Death Metro rank that's raising is the, uh, the little score that you see under the medal. Now at the far right side of the screen, you've got two bronze medals. One of them, the top one is ours, and the information on top is for us. And the information at the bottom is for the people you're raiding. We'll show you their rank, how much kill coins and spiffium they have, and what team they belong to, as well as their name. Also other information, which is in question marks. Usually they don't tell you anything about their defense. So who will we raid? Someone with some large amount of kill coins and spiffium. Oh, this looks like a good one. A uh, 4,000 kill coins guy. Now they've got zero. Uh, they've got zero rank, but still, at the very bottom in the middle of the screen, r to the right of the raid cost, you see the TDM points, and it says wins losses. That means for a win, we'll increase in rank by 13 points. For a loss, we'll lose 31 points. Now the higher uh, in ranking you will be fighting in uh, for enemies, the more your rank will increase and the less it will decrease if you lose. So if you're attacking a really tough guy, then it's, the, it's quite possible that you'll lose zero rank for a loss because you're attacking someone really tough. Now if you're attacking someone who's weaker than you, then the penalty for a loss is much more severe. Have a good one. Die! No, you die. Oh 
trying to save the uh, durability on our strong bat. Might want to use that for something else. Okay, 5,000 kill coins. Awesome. Now, this is one way of farming materials. And by materials, I actually read resources. Another way would be, well, the next highest drop for resources would be the enemy haters. So, another way of farming kill coins. Another way of farming kill coins and spliffium would be to uh, spam kill uh, haters. Of course, you don't have to farm kill coins in uh, this repetitive manner. You could also go up and make progress through the tower. You could just climb floors, kill all the enemies, pick up all the loot, and farm in that manner. But that wouldn't really be stuck in farming. That would be just resource accrual. We're attacking the second Brazilian gamer. So you saw him spawn right above us, and the last time there was one spawning over here. So those are the different slots you can set people into defense that'll, that'll make a difference in where they all spawn in this room, and in the previous room. If you want to set up a defense which spawns in a very awkward place or very confusing place for the attacker, you can always check that out with your defense simulation. I think one of the more confusing places to spawn a defender would be right above the door of the train in the first room. That would be a really good spot for the first one to spawn. Beat up those guys. Not a good amount of resources. 12,000 spliffium. That should be enough to upgrade something. Okay, so we've got 21,000 kill coins and 12,000 spliffium. Only going to need another 10,000 kill coins to get that one blueprint. So go to the waiting room and upgrade some of our uh, our uh, waiting room storage spaces. Uh, I think we'll do the bank. 
try and get that well above 100k because well, it would be nice working in a series of 50,000. Well, we'll upgrade 10,000 now, but we'll be wanting to get it upgraded in series of uh, 50,000 for the mushroom stews. They cost 50,000. That's one of the more expensive things to use skill coins on. So that'll be upgraded in just less than an hour. Who could we attack with a lot of rank? I mean, a lot of resources to steal. I think you look fine. 4,000. At this phase in the game, not many people bother defending. Easy wins. So that's one defender, and this one's just an extra they've thrown in. So that's his defense uh, dealt with. It was smart of him to put them here though, they're uh, keeping us from their resources. with the uh, unarmed to increase our mastery for that weapon. I could finish them off with the bat, which would look cool, but I'd get no uh, experience for our weapon doing that. And by, we by weapon experience, I mean weapon mastery. So I think one or two more attacks should do it. Then I'll be set to head up to Yakufuncha by that uh, blueprint. I think I'll do that uh, off... Uh, off out of video actually. So uh, next time we're gonna be going up the tower again and trying to make some progress. Trying to make some vertical progress. And I'll have, I'll think I'll upgrade, well I'll farm the resources necessary to buy the blueprint from this door which is uh, part of an armor set I'm planning to use for the rest of this playthrough, so it's important to get. And uh, that's about it for this episode, I'd say. So, see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Let It Die.